The 2019 Ohio State Fair happens July 24th through August 4th. For more information, daily schedules, and to hear season one of this podcast, visit OhioStateFair.com. That's OhioStateFair.com. From the Cooper Arena, we bid you hello the day that we've been waiting for. It's truly one of the highlights of the Ohio State Fair. The sale of champions and auctioneer Merlin Woodruff of Ravana, Ohio, one of the most popular auctioneers anywhere in the country, will again be auctioneering the sale. The Ohio State Fair and Wessler Media are proud to present A Fair to Remember, discovering the stories and people behind this statewide tradition. I'm your host, Vince Tornero, and this is Season 2. Time to bring in the little young gal who showed the grand champion meat-type chickens, and that's Kristen Root. From Carroll, Ohio. This episode of A Fair to Remember has to deal with ag at the fair, specifically the sale of champions that happens on the last day of the fair each year. Now, that champion, Kristen Root, who you just heard introduced, she has two new things in her life. First, a new last name, and two, she's got two kids who she's raising to follow in her footsteps. So I asked Kristen if I could come out to their family farm in Carroll and get to know a little bit of her story and her children's story, and she said, sure. And here's what happened. My name is Kristen Reese. I'm the mother of these two. My name is Parker Reese. I'm nine years old, and I show animals and do all kinds of things at the fair. My name is Campbell Reese, and I'm 11. And at the fair, we show animals and go down the giant slide. We grew up raising sheep. We knew nothing about poultry. We'd never raised poultry. My dad was an assistant superintendent at the state fair, and I think he had been talking with Bill Karcher, who he and his wife Kay own Eagle's Nest Hatchery in Osceola, Ohio, and had said, you know, you gotta show some meat chickens at the state fair. So I said, okay, because when you're nine, you just do what your parents say. And it was a lot of work. Poultry might be a short project, the meat chickens, but it's intensive labor. There's a lot of weighing, a lot of dipping to get them feathered and washing chickens, blow drying chickens. If you've not experienced this, stop by the poultry barn and you will see it at some point during the fair. And it was a lot of work. And so I said, I am never doing this again. And my mom and dad were like, oh, it's going to be fine. We'll just go to the fair. It'll be great. So we got to the show. What excitement it was for nine-year-old Kristen Rudum near Carroll, Ohio, a first-year member in 4-H. And think of it, her birds were selected the grand champion meat type chicken and very exciting. Suddenly I went from never doing this again to I might try this again. So back in 1990. Kristen, are you ready? All right. Hi, I'm here to get sick on them. Ladies and gentlemen, the grand champion pen of six chickens at the 1990 Ohio State Fair is sold right there. Um, My bird sold for $7,500. That was a pen of six meat type chickens is what they say. They called them back then. And Siam Restaurant on Bethel Road bought those birds, and he was so excited. Well, we're going to use it for general show chicken at our restaurant. I can remember um, he was kind of shaking his hands in the air, and I remember taking very deep breaths because I was so nervous. I was holding my banner. I had a chicken in my hand, and the band was um, playing their songs, and the choir started chanting and Merlin would have been um, trying to get a little more out. He was trying to squeak, I think. $8,000, 76 and Guan. I have 75, I have six. And it ended at 7,500, and Celeste was the governor then. And so he was very involved in the wholesale champions. He would have been a ringman. He would have been out trying to get the bids from Kroger and Meyer, all the big, bigger grocery chains that would have been there. And I remember he was there with the gentleman from Siam uh, to secure the bid and then raised his hand. and and they said sold to Siam Restaurant. Then Ed Johnson would have been there, so when you you are a champion at the State Fair, Ed Johnson would have immediately interviewed you uh, for the ABN radio, and um, so he talked to me a little bit. Um, I'm going to give some of it to the 4-H, Fairfield County 4-H Building Fund, and some of it to our church building fund, and the rest of it is going to my college fund. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give another nice round of applause to our Brian? And I can remember my mom telling me later she was sweating bullets because she had no idea what I would say about this process, even if I liked it and how we raise these birds. And I think I did just fine. I did okay. Um, But my parents were certainly nervous about what I would say about raising these these chickens because it wasn't always fun. I mean, it was a lot of work and you're wet and you smell like a chicken. I mean, it's not exactly, you know, what every nine-year-old girl or boy wants to smell like. And one more time for Kristen Root. Would you please? 
So being a champion or being in the sale of champions, I think it's something that every kid strives for. You know, maybe you're nine or, you know, you're one in 4-H when you're nine. You don't quite know what that sale of champions means, but each and every one of those kids has worked tirelessly, you know, in the barn, late, night, late nights, missing out with some friends' activities, really just making sure that those animals are taken care of. And that means food and water and shelter, but it also means exercise and it means washing and weighing and repeating that over twice a day, sometimes three times a day for the entire duration of that project. So you get to the fair and the fair is really the fun part. You get there, you're meeting new friends. Um, it takes a family support behind the child. It's not just us. When I was nine years old, I had no clue what I was doing. Frankly, my parents didn't know what they were doing either. And um, you know, it was a really a family affair. I mean, it really takes the entire family um, working hard and working together. And it also takes a lot of studying to have the knowledge to go with all the feeding regimens and the exercise. There's so much science behind all of that that people are doing and getting to the fair and part of it's luck. I mean, it really has to be partially luck because you're, you're competing against these animals that are looking just as good as yours are. And it's really up to that judge on that day, a different day, a different judge can make a different decision, but it certainly will change one 4-H or FRFA members, you know, really their life forever because they will have that experience that a lot of kids don't have. And now because of the um, youth reserve program, there's so many other ways to get in the sale of champions. There's scholarship, there's outstanding youth exhibitors. So those opportunities have really expanded for a lot of kids since 1990, which, you know, there was a little bit of pushback, I think, you know, those kids aren't going to get all that money they deserve, but now they're able to help hundreds of kids um, get a little bit of that and have it an experience in the sale of champions. And it's, it's a fantastic program. When you're showing a lamb like how do you get it ready just tell me all about that um so first you'd wash them then you would get the stuff out of their wool but like you'd brush that you'd curry comb them and then you would uh, um you'd like car you fluff up their wool so do you have you hand trim them like do you do it yourself or do you get some help uh, I, I've done it. i get help but yes, I do it. I do it sometimes by myself. This mows the hay, and then if it rains, then we have troubles. Trouble. But we ted the hay, then we rake the hay, then we bale the hay, then the hay goes on the wagon, then the wagon goes in the barn. Did you learn all this? Uh, well, I kind of picked it up along the way, of all of everything that I've been through. And how old are you again? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's impressive, man. No, seriously, that really is impressive. So, if they have a red earlobe, their eggs will be brown. And if they have a white earlobe, it'll be white. So that's she has a white. So she plays white eggs. Do you think we could fit a sheep in the back of my Honda Civic? No. Oh, we've done it in the Prius. So. Oh, actually, yes, we have. <laughs> You did, wait, 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 you fit, what did you fit in the back of a Prius? Fit, like, lots of things in the Prius. Lots of things. Like so people what? laugh that I drive a Prius. I'm like, it gets 48 miles per gallon. You guys are nuts. You'd be driving one too. And plus we have the big trucks. We have to counteract. Tell him all the different things we've had in that Prius. Uh, we've had chickens. Rabbit, one time we had rabbit. a sheep in the back seat. I mean, it's very emotional. I, every time I, I listen to the Sale of Champions and watch it, you know, I get goosebumps. I'm like, this is so exciting for these families to experience this. And, you know, I would love for Campbell or Parker to have the opportunity someday. Likelihood, probably not, but maybe yes. And so um, that's an experience I would love for them to have like I did. Um, but it's so exciting when you do well and when you're rewarded for that hard work. And just being at the fair is a, is a, great, um, a great experience. So the year that I won Champion Chickens back in 1990, you know, shocked, couldn't believe it. Uh, Clell Agler was um, a superintendent and he was the showmanship judge. And Clell still is the poultry superintendent today. And he was a very, you know, stern looking man. He was very serious and he was very intimidating for a nine year old. So I did showmanship and I didn't really want to do showmanship. I was nervous and my parents said, oh, just go do it. Tell them everything you know. And so I did it. But Clell asked me a question, and I think that that question was, what's the incubation period of an egg? And I couldn't remember, I hesitated, and he started to move on, and then I remembered it. And I told him the answer, and he said, too late, I've already moved on. And I was just like, my heart sank, and I was just holding back the tears, and I was just 
you know, kind of a disaster inside. And so I ended up winning showmanship and I was scared to death of Clell. I said, he is so mean, he is scary. And my parents said, you go talk to him and see what you can do next time to be even better. And so I was scared of him. And so finally they made him do this. And he's such a nice guy and he's friendly. He just happens to be really tall. And you know, when you're nine, he looks intimidating. And so he said, how about we go down the giant slide together? And so every year since I was nine, we have gone down the giant slide together. I think we've missed a couple years in adulthood, but we did it last year. And he does it with the kids now too. And it's just great fun. And so that's one of our favorite stories that now is continuing with the children. But I was scared of him and now we still ride the giant slide together. Something that's totally cool about Kristen's story is an aspect that you might've picked up on already is that Merlin Woodruff was the one who auctioned off her pen of chickens back in 1990. Now, Merlin was the very first auctioneer at the very first sale of champions at the Ohio State Fair. Merlin loved the fair. Todd Woodruff, his nephew, is the guy who was one of the ringmen at the sale of champions. So it's cool to see the generational love of the fair go through auctioneer families. So we had a chance to catch up with Todd and learn more about who Merlin was. Well, when we say family, we can really narrow that down to one, and that was my great uncle, Merlin Woodruff. And uh, anybody that's ever auctioneered, I think, frank, well, frankly, within uh, all the states, they know the name or knew the name. The eras are changing, so some maybe don't. But Uncle Merlin sold in, uh, throughout his career, he sold in 48 states and three provinces in Canada. Never had a cell phone, never knew what the internet was. You know, it was just a all word of mouth. Uh, but, but I'll tell you, not because he was my uncle, but one of the best. And I think any, any auctioneer, especially anybody of my era and younger, uh, they'll agree with that. Not a soul can fill his shoes nor sound like him anything. Uncle Merlin was uh, extremely down to earth. You know, you, you couldn't tell if he had 10 million or 10 cents. Uh, he never forgot where he came from, uh, never forgot how he was raised. And uh, I, I, if I had to put Uncle Merlin in one word, it would be genuine because he liked people. He, he, he was honest, he took care of people. You know, when he did a sale, it, the thought process wasn't how much he was gonna make. It was all about doing a good job for the person he was working for. That was his mentality. One of, one of the memories that sticks out is at the Champaign County Fair, uh, there was a, uh, he was selling a, it was a club calf sale. And this calf walked in the ring, made two laps around that ring, and dove straight into the block right on top of Merlin. Knocked him off of the back of that block, landed right on his chest, Put his knee in his leg. I, I swear he never he never walked with a limp until after that. But uh, he actually he actually got back up and uh, he got a little bloody lip out of it. But he he finished the sale. I'll never forget that. I can see that today. I guess I was, it was frankly all of us were a little bit dumbfounded. I mean, all of a sudden there goes the calf and Merlin's gone. <laughs> uh, he just I mean he landed flat on his back out of that block. I I can still see him laying there. His hat was. Knocked his hat off, and that was that wasn't good. You knock his hat off. He never cared for that much. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those deals. So you have an, a manure pit, right? All right. Some of them, some of them are underground. Some of them are basically a lagoon. Some of them are underground, and there'll be like a, a a square hole in the ground that's covered with something, and that's where you would pump it. Well, they had a piece of plywood over this that was rotten and it had snowed. It was, he was getting ready for a sale, and there was snow covered, and he walked on top of that thing and fell through it. Yeah, yeah. He said I was, he was just lucky that that thing was not full, but they dug him out of there, and of course he had to finish the sale. He said he like froze to death. I mean, obviously your uncle had quite a bit of influence, but when, when, did, you, when did it connect with you and said, this is what I want to do? Uh. I never did. I never did say that's what I want to do. And that would surprise anybody that's going to listen to this. They're going to be surprised to hear me say that. My mom talked me into going to auctioneer school. And uh, 
it, at the time, I would have been working for my Uncle Ray, which had the dairy sales management business. And uh, I was actually milking, milking the cows and helping clip and, and all the so-called grunt work at the time. And uh, I think they were hard up for a ring man one evening, and, and I helped with that and really didn't know what I was doing, but I did it. And, you know, mom, mom just kept prodding. And, and I, I'm kind of like I'm a little hog-headed. So the harder she prodded, the more I backed up. But for whatever reason, she kind of laid off, and I picked up this tape of Leroy Van Dyke of the auctioneer song. And uh, I just I got to playing it in the in my truck, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of I decided that you know maybe I should. They teach you how to count, believe that or not. One, two, three. Well, basically, with a, with a little bit of with a little bit of speed going forward and backwards, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty, fifteen, twelve and a half. Here, okay, you, you know, so you're you're up, you're you're back and forth and cutting your different, uh, whatever they call that, uh, cutting it from ten, ten, fifteen to twelve and a half, and then down to one and back up, blah blah. They taught you law. Uh, and you had some, you had some catchphrases, and you know, Betty bought her some butter, but she said her butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So, you know, every auction, every young auctioneer had to go through that one. You know, of course, I told, I told Unc, I always called him Unc. Told Unc I made it, made it through in the past. And uh, when he would have a sale that he could take me to, a farm sale, you know, he didn't control the, the, uh, the ring staff for the livestock sales that he did. But, you know, whenever we had a, and, and a few household sales, but uh, farm sales, household sale, he'd take me, he'd take me. And it wasn't, he never, he never uh, told me what to do, what not to do. He, he basically led by example. He kind of, you know, th that's another one where he just grew. He grew up with it, as the, as the Ohio State Fair grew. He grew with it. He was, he was the first auctioneer to have the sale of champions. Prior to having a sale of champions, they would, uh, oh, they'd have. I think the cattle were under the viaduct, and they'd have, uh, you know, the hogs in the hog barn. They, they, each species had their own little sale, but he had, uh, you know, due to I'm just going to say complications there with a couple of his strokes. He actually lost his voice. But, you know, you, you've got somebody there that lived his whole life talking. And and all of a sudden, you know, just can't get her to come out anymore. Uh, I, that was that Merlin always took so much pride in his health anyways. You know, he didn't wear ear tabs. The coldest sails out there, he he didn't wear ear tabs. And uh, he he was a tough old bird. I've done my best to to uphold the reputation. I know I know I can't compare to him as an auctioneer, okay? Um, but I've done my best to uphold the reputation, the Woodruff reputation, to be frank about it, because you know that's the way Merlin was raised. And I'll tell you, whenever you're at a sale and it's warm, the easiest way to cool off is bid fast. There's nothing like it. I'll take 71, and thank you. A Fair to Remember, presented by the Ohio State Fair and produced, edited, sound designed by Wessler Media. Executive producer and PR manager is Alicia Schultz. Additional script writing and editing by Becca Kerr. Every episode expertly mastered by Joey Gerwin at Orange Judio. Special thanks to all of our guests and anyone who did anything at all to make this podcast a reality. And thank you for attending the fair year after year and upholding this wonderful and fun tradition. Last, and of course not least, got to mention my wife, Melina, who listened patiently to various rewrites, versions, and edits of all of these episodes. I love you. And I'm your host, Vince Tornero. This has been A Fair to Remember. I'll see you on the Midway. The fun, the draw, the excitement of a fair, that should be enjoyed by everybody. And this year, the Ohio State Fair, it's going to be more accessible and inclusive of individuals with disabilities. Now, this is in partnership with Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, 
complimentary wheelchair mobility charging stations. They will be available throughout the grounds and are listed on the fair maps. And these fair maps, they can be picked up at the fair guest information services booths. Second, fairgoers who are blind or low vision, they can use this technology called IRA. This is really amazing stuff. Now, IRA, it's going to connect to an agent who can help you with navigation. In collaboration with Ocali, a sensory-friendly morning is going to take place July 31st, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. throughout the fair. The lights and the music on all the rides are going to be turned off, and fairgoers can enjoy the many educational activities, including those in the Oasis at the fair. That is the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Park. Now, if you want more information on all this and all this great stuff about making the fair more accessible, you can find it by emailing info at expo.ohio.gov. That's info at expo.ohio.gov. Or you can plan to stop by a guest information services booth during the fair. I do have one, and this one does relate to the Ohio State Fair. I was selling I was selling a club pig sale at the Champaign County Fair in Urbana. And we were midway through the sale, and of course you always usually sell choice. And there were three pigs in the ring. And there was a, a, a big fella that I never saw this guy bid. Right straight away from me. I never saw him. Ring man never saw him. The fact is he bid late, okay? But that's beside the point. And the ring man had a, uh, he had an order to buy buy a couple pigs for a couple kids. The pig brought $175. This guy stood up, and I'm telling you, he was going to whip me. He was mad. And I said, sir, I just, I didn't see you. And uh, Kevin Mears is who was buying the pig. He turned to me, and he said, just let him have him. I said, sir, you can have the pig, 175 bucks. No way. And he called me a few choice words right in front of the crowd and everything else. He said, I ain't taking him. And he stormed out of there. That pig was the grand champion barrow at the Ohio State Fair that year. My last question is, can you auction off this microphone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I suppose it'd be wrong if I didn't, wouldn't it? Now, now it's a Sure SM7B. Oh, you've got a Sure SM7B, ladies and gentlemen, and he this this microphone is going to be selling open today for you for you uh, <laughs> livestock boys out there. And what will I give for him? How many dollars here? I got five of the bib ten. Twenty dollars. Twenty. Thank you. Now thirty. I had twenty of the bib thirty. I had twenty. Uh, forty. Now forty. Now fifty. I had fifty here. Now five of the bib five here. Don't buy Seventy five. Seventy five. Now hundred, I had hundred, dude, on hundred dollar dude, and I'm on solder, seventy five dollars outside. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Oh shoot.